everybody, it's Thursday. Welcome to a Mike Talk. Thank you guys for joining me. I love you all. I'm praying for you, and I know you're praying for me. I, I'm, I appreciate so much the, the text, the emails, the cards, the letters where you say, praying for you, Pastor. I know that's what keeps us going, and I'm, I'm uh, grateful for that. Hey, shout out to Luke Funfar. I'm drinking some of this coffee today. It's, the, it's from Presto George in the Strip District in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He actually brings it back from Pittsburgh, some kind of Sumatra blend today. Here's to you, Luke, praying for you and Angie, Charlie, all you guys. Barb, sorry, I didn't want to leave anybody in the family out. Uh, listen, a couple of uh, quick things just to share with you that are coming up really, really important um, at the Chateau. We meet every Sunday, you know, at 9 and 1030. Two special um, days coming up. Uh, actually, three. Let me throw three in there. Uh, the, the last Sunday, the 28th of April, uh, we are going to have our baptistry ready. So if you want to be baptized, would you contact us today? Or just show up at church and sign up at the welcome table. Also, there you can sign up for May 5th. We're doing... Uh, what we call together that's our membership class and you need to sign up for it because on that evening we'll be having it right here in this sanctuary we'll serve a meal and uh, we'll share uh, what it means to become a part of the song and sword church and then finally and really excited about this our very first ever child dedication baby dedication sunday um, you can sign up at the church or you can go online you can go to that point 149 Go to our website, songandsword.com, click point 149, and you can find the information there about baby dedication. And uh, we'll be doing it both services, 9 and 1030. If you as a parent or parents, you want to dedicate your children to the Lord, we have a covenant for you to take. It's like a, it's like a wedding ceremony for raising your kids, is what I always call it. And we, we love blessing families to raise their babies in the Lord. So uh, keep doing that. Uh, text prayer to that number on the screen. And uh, let us know what your prayer requests are, and we'll pray for you. So I'm waking up today, and I've got to write a sermon. That's what I'll be doing. But um, I want to get to the word uh, in the book of Jude. Uh, you know, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, Revelation, the last book in the Bible. It's an epistle written by Jesus' brother, who's called Judas. Or Judas is a very popular name in the first century. But if, in Mark, uh, if you want to go check this out, Mark chapter 6, verse 3, um, he's listed as one of Jesus' brothers. That We believe that means that he was naturally born of Mary and Joseph. Jesus was supernaturally born of Mary, so Joseph would have been his earthly father. But Jude, Judas, and James, who writes the other epistle, James, they would have been the brothers of Jesus. They grew up in his household. They were his siblings. And here's what he writes um, Towards the end of the first century, <clears throat> a warning to us about something very important called grace. We sing a song of grace, a song and sword. Here's what he says about it. Jude, verse 3. There's just one chapter, so Jude 3. Beloved, although I was eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Um, I, I love the fact that, that James refers to our faith as this common salvation. That really is a great description. We're, the word common there, koinonia, is a form of koinos, means we're in this together. We've, we're, it's a common saving. We, we can't do this on our own. Nobody in the church is, um, or in, as a follower of Jesus Christ, is there because they figured it out. They've got good deeds bigger than bad deeds, or they've become righteous on their own. It's a common salvation. It's a common saving. We're, we're in the same boat when it comes to being saved. But he, he has a warning here. He said, I want to encourage you about our common salvation, but I need to tell you to defend the faith. I need to tell you to stand up for what's truth. This is another part of the song of grace, the sword of truth. You know, we're living in a culture where truth is being set aside, especially in Christian so, uh, cultures, in American Christianity, uh, that's becoming very, very lukewarm and mediocre in faith. He's saying, would somebody stand up and defend the faith? Would someone go back to the absolute truth? Because there are people who have come into your fellowship. They've crept into the church unnoticed, 
I think, I think we're noticing them more today. But they've come in and they are perverting the grace of our God. They're perverting the grace of God into sensuality. Does that sound familiar at all? You take the great, what, what's the word pervert mean? Perverting. Oh, it's literally a Greek word that means to hand over or to turn over. And so we understand it to mean you're handing over, you're turning over, you're changing grace. See, this is a real big temptation for all of us in every situation. It's tempting to turn grace into sensuality. It's tempting to turn grace into a license to do whatever feels good. And that's what's happening in our culture. So many churches, so many denominations, so many preachers and pastors have turned grace so that grace simply means you can do whatever you want because Jesus is just going to turn his head and be okay with it. And I always say to people, if you think that grace is cheap, then you have to look at the cross of Jesus Christ and ask yourself, why did God send his son to die if, if it didn't matter, if grace is just, everybody gets to do whatever they want. Now listen, I believe in the grace of Jesus Christ. I need it. But I cannot turn grace, I can't turn grace over to mean I get to do what I want. That's what he says here, he throws in an extra term, to deny our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. We confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, which means he's the charge. In the charge, he throws out the word master. He's my master today. He's my Lord. I do what he says. When it says this in the word of God, I stand by it and I obey it. Not, not because I'm capable, but because his Holy Spirit is in me to help me do it and because he has called me to it. And he's making me into a righteous person. May I never take the grace of Jesus Christ and turn it into my sensuality. That's what's happening in the world. And he says, Jude says to this, in the end of the first century, he says, hey guys, guard this. Uh, I, I want you to contend for the faith. Fight for it. Don't let the ways of this world turn the grace of Jesus into something it was never meant to be. Grace is not meant for sensuality. Grace is to remind us of why Jesus is Lord and Savior. That's the thought for this Thursday. Hope you guys are blessed.